Okay, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taza War from the GMS New Jersey camp. And uh, this one here is going to be a quick hit. I wanted to, uh, you know, just go into a, a little more depth in which there was a topic I did yesterday. Uh, dealing with Paul and Cyrus being beaten and persecuted for teaching Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. And, you know, the highlight of the lesson was in verse 21 and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. You know, there was a reason why uh, these men, you know, did this to Paul and Cyrus and the men that followed Paul. In the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you know, because of their gains were gone, right? It says, now here's a commentary in the Bible Hub, and it says 21, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe me in Romans. Here also there was a measure of truth, as the introduction of new gods was, new gods was forbidden by the laws, and this might be thought to apply to any change of religion but the whole charge was pure hypocrisy for as these men would have let the missionary preach what religion they please if they had not dried up the source of their gains they so they concealed the real cause of their rage under color of zeal for religion and law and good order you know so just going a little more depth into it and why these men you know, had Paul and Cyrus and the men that followed Paul, you know, being persecuted, you know, and it's and it's the same as it is today. You know, what happened in the past is uh, happening today. Um, there's a few more things in here I wanted to grab. And actually, um, a brother actually sent me a few uh, snapshots of certain things he saw. And then from there, I started reading. And uh, saw some more things. So hopefully this is edifying to those of the whole four elect. All right. Uh, let me see. Bear with me. Uh, okay. Let's read this. It says, which are not lawful for us to receive. There were laws of the Roman Empire under which they might shield themselves in this charge. Though it be evident that their zeal was not because they loved the laws more but because they love Christianity less. All right. It says care was taken among the Athens and the Romans that no one should introduce new religions. It was on this account that Socrates was condemned and the Chaldeans or Jews were banished from the city. It says no person shall have any separate gods or new ones nor shall he privately worship any strange gods unless they be publicly allowed. All right, so, you know, it's the same as today. And you can see that with Esau striving to put a ban on teachings of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, you see these celebrities being being um, uh, persecuted for the words that come out of their mouth, speaking on behalf of being a Jew, a real Jew. And knowing who Esau Edom is, you know, Nick Cannon, for an example, you had like a, a good two weeks in a row or three weeks in a row of celebrities making mention of knowing that they're Israelites. And you saw basically Nick Cannon overall out of all of them. And I think Tiff Tiffany Harrison suffering, too. That's why she cut her hair off. But they're being they're being, um, uh, you know, Esau's coming down on them for uh, speaking you know, of this truth, right? And not only that, but us Hebrew Israelites, you know, and celebrities like Ice Cube were being called anti-Semitic, all right? Now, that's kind of ridiculous because to be Semitic, you know, to be anti mean against and Semitic, we are Semitic, all right? Jacob and Esau were twin brothers, and they came from out of the line of Shem. So how could we be anti-Semitic? You know, so eventually... The more and more these draconian laws get pushed, all right, they're going to put a ban, you know, 
just like a famine on the word is going to come, you know, for teaching his word. So let's continue. It says the Romans would indeed allow foreigners to worship their own God, but not unless they were done secretly so that the worship of the foreign gods would not interfere with the allowed worship of the Romans. And all the Roman gods were, were uh, false gods, okay? False gods. And just as well as today, the scriptures say how um, uh, the God of this world have blinded them. And so that the occasion for dissension and controversy might be avoided. Neither was it lawful among the Romans to recommend a new religion to the citizens, contrary to what was confirmed and established by the public authority. And to call off the people from that, it was on this account that were, it was on this account that there was such a hatred of the Romans against the Jews. Tartalian, Tartalian says that there was a decree that no god should be consecrated unless approved by the Senate. All right. So let's go and read this right here. It says, uh, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. It says here also there was a measure of truth as the introduction of new gods were forbidden by the laws. And this might be thought to apply to any change of religion, but the whole change was pure hypocrisy. All right. It says, for as these men would have let the mercy, the missionary preach what religion they please if they had not dried up the source of their gains. So they concealed the real cause of their rage under color of zeal for religion and law and good order. All right. So, you know, when it goes back to uh, Acts 16, 21, these men who who persecuted Paul and beat him and brought him up to the magistrate, the, the magistrates. All right. You know, their real cause was because Paul stopped their gains. And it clearly tells you that in the 19th verse, it says, And when her master saw that the hopes of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. You know, because Paul took that lying spirit from off that damsel, that which was a young woman or a maid. Okay. So the real reason was because their money would dried up. All right. And um, let's go into a little more. I have one more. Hopefully, Lord willing, I pray this is uh, edifying. Now, it says being Romans, it says the Romans granted absolute toleration to conquer nations to follow their own religious customs and took the gods of these countries under their protection of Ota, Dimension, Commodus and Caracalla was zealous part partisans, uh, partisans of the worship of Isis, Serapis and Cerebella were patronized at Rome. It says uh, he took the gods of these countries under the under their protections. Okay, so Esau had all these gods in which he allowed, you know, for you to worship, but the true and living power he he didn't allow it. Okay, it brought too much controversy, you know, it brought too much drama, you know, and it would brought it brought people to uh, come against their power. You know, so going back unto Acts 16 and 21 and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. It's the same as today. You got Israelites. All right. Which are so-called Negroes, Hispanics. All right. West Indians, Haitians. All right. Native Seminole Indians, Mexicans. You know, they hear this truth. They see the gospel. They see the men of the Lord and they know what it's about. You know, they know the. 12 tribes of Israel, but they despise this truth because they say they teach, we're teaching customs which are not lawful for them to receive, neither to observe being Americans, you know, or you could say from whatever land that you are in, okay, because Job 9.24 says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, all right, so whether the Moabites are ruling or not, you know, I mean, excuse me. Whether these other nations are ruling in their land, we know that Esau rules the world. You even got uh, Chinese and Japanese people who worship Jesus Christ. And I'm talking about sweet Jesus. All right. White Jesus. You know, they got the picture and everything. They cry and, you know, 
You got Hamites who worship white Jesus. You know, so it's really no different from what it was in the past. You know, and sooner or later Esau is going to put a ban on worshiping Yahweh Shai. You see how much controversy is brung to his uh his his kingdom. All right. And uh let me get a quick precept here. Um let's read this. This is 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which uh have blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. All right, so if our gospel, good news, be hid, it is hid to those that are lost. And whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Now, who's the God of this world? That's Satan, okay? You know, which is the counterpart Esau, Edom. You know, going back to being those Romans, all right? Uh, you know, going back to being the, the Romans, you know, going back to being the Greeks, starting with Alexander who conquered, you know, his conquests and conquered these countries. All right. That was the start of Esau's ruling and his blessing of being Esau that the Most High gave him. All right. All right. And this is this is also why, you know, when brothers say, you know, this is the second leg of Rome, you know, pertaining to Daniel's uh, vision and dream that he had. All right. And you had the uh, feet mixed with clay. All right. It goes back to what? The Roman Empire. This ain't nothing today but the, mo the modern day Roman Empire, which goes back to being the Greeks. All right. Which who was ruling, who ruled back then, who's ruling now is Esau Edom. He's still in power. He fell and now he's back up in power, which he came back up in power during the um, time of the Borgia family. All right. And ever since then, he been he been in power, you know. So, uh, let me get this other precept I had. It was uh, 2 Corinthians ten, uh, ten and five. It says, casting down imaginations and and every high thing that exhorteth itself against the knowledge of Yahweh, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yahweh Shai. All right. So when Yahweh Shai is being taught. There's going to be controversy. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be, uh, uh, <laughs> hey, when the Most High sends his word and his prophets to speak, hey, pro uh, 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 shit goes down, man. All right. <laughs> You're going to have pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. All right. Wars, nation versus nation, kingdom versus kingdom. All right. And this is why they basically put a ban on worshiping Yahweh Shai, you know, all right, which is the true and living power. All right. And um, I hope this was edifying. I just wanted to bring that up. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.